Hi and welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. With this video we are going to create a very warm sunset image by manipulating the colors quite heavily in this shot. The editing for this image will be quite a bit more complicated than for the other shots I usually upload, but you can still follow along by downloading the raw file. You can find the link to it in the description of the video and now let's begin. So here we have the raw file opened up in the camera raw editor and as you can see there's not much warmth going on. Just a little bit on the horizon where the sun is shining through but the rest of the image is rather cold. I do want to change that and I also want to apply a dreamy look here. First off let's head into the profiles drop down menu and change the profile to Adobe landscape. This brings up the saturation a bit already. Then we can open up the basic panel and work on the white balance. To warmen up images I usually just go and bring up the temperature a bit. Just like that. I don't want to make it look unnatural at this point already so I think this is a good spot right here. We still have a little bit of blues left in the sky but overall the shot got a bit warmer. And then I'm going to bring up the shadows. Just have a little more brightness in the darkest areas and I'm also going to raise the highlights. This will overexpose the brightest areas back there where the sun is shining through, but my opinion is sometimes a little bit of overexposure works quite well. And by overexposing this area right here, I just have reduced the details in that bright spot, which otherwise would look a bit chaotic in my opinion. So next up, let's bring up the texture to give this image a little more sharpness and at the same time I'm bringing down the clarity to make the overall look a little softer. And finally let's bring up the vibrance for more saturation. Perfect. We can compare the image to before. You can see we do have more intense colors already and the whole image is a little brighter. Next up let's work on the masking. And with the masking there's already a lot going on. First off, let's work on the sky, therefore I'm using a linear gradient and I just want to cover the top part of the sky. In here I'm bringing down the exposure just to make the top part a little darker. I'm also going to add contrast which will make the clouds more interesting. And then we could add a bit of clarity for the same effect. Perfect, looks much more dramatic already. Let's create another linear gradient, uh, let's say just for the foreground like this. In here again I want to bring up the contrast. I also want to bring up the whites which will add just a bit more brightness to the foreground. And I want to slightly raise the temperature. Let's just go with the super low value here. And I'm also going to adjust the tint because right now the foreground has a very subtle green color cast. So I try to fix that by raising the tint very, very slightly. Perfect. I do want to apply a bit of glow to the horizon on the bright spots. For that reason, I'm using a radial gradient and I'm making it really, really thin, but I'm also making sure it covers most of the horizon just like that. And in here, let's bring up the blacks for the glow effect. And also let's drop the dehaze to make the glow a little stronger. That looks about right. Then we can add some more warmth to this area. This time, however, I'm not using the white bullet's temperature. Instead, I'm using this little box right here, which is a bit hidden. So clicking on that will bring you to this color window. And I want to have a very saturated orange tone in this area. So let's see. Also want to make it really saturated. So that's looking good. Perfect. Then let's create another linear gradient for the very near foreground. Just a small one like this and I'm going to use this to create some kind of vignetting effect by bringing down the exposure very very slightly. All right. And finally, I do want to use another linear gradient on the sky like this. And here I just want to bring up the saturation of the sky. Just giving this whole shot some more colors. And maybe even bring up the temperature to make the sky warmer. 
that looks great. Let me turn off the masking for a moment so you can see the difference. And especially in the sky, we have added a much stronger dramatic look with the dark clouds against the warm sunset. So next up, the color grading. Let's start in the color mixer tab with the hue. Here I just want to bring down the yellow hue, which will mostly affect the warm color tones in the sky on the horizon level. Just making this part more orange. All right, then let's head over into the saturation tab and bring up the orange saturation. Then I'm dropping the green saturation all the way down because I don't like this subtle green color cast which is going on in this image. And I'm also going to drop the aqua color all the way down. Instead, I'm going to bring up the blues a little bit. Perfect. Not going to touch the luminance tab, but now let's continue with the split toning. As always, I'm starting with the highlights. And here, of course, let's use a very warm color tone and bring up the saturation a lot. Now for the midtones and the shadows, I want to have some cold colors left in this image, so I'm going to use them and just apply a cold color tone in here. Again, I'm going to use a very high amount of saturation for the midtones because those two colors for the highlights and the midtones work pretty well together in this shot. Now for the shadows, again, cold color tone. But here I'm using a very low amount of saturation because otherwise it looks super unnatural. That looks great, however. Now, the only thing that's left to do is the sharpening. So let's open up the details tab, bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking, and then increase the amount of sharpening. Perfect. And with that out of the way, it's time to open this shot up in Photoshop to finish the editing. First, of course, you need to clean up the shot from sensor spots and vignetting and some birds sitting in the water. For that, I'm using the spot healing brush and just zoom in and then just get rid of all those sensor spots. All right, looking much cleaner. Still, I want to get rid of those things on the railing on the side of the boardwalk. And here I'm just going to use the clone stem tool and by holding down the Alt key and clicking in this area right next to it, I can copy this exact spot. Then I'm just hovering over it and I'm replacing this thing on the railing. And just like that, it's gone. Let's do that on the other side as well. Just copy an area from here and place it over there. Next up, I do want to enhance the contrast some more. How am I doing this? simply by going into the adjustment layers and adding a curves adjustment layer. First, however, before I add contrast, I'm going to use the black point and just slightly drag it up. This will make the shadows brighter and thus we are losing contrast, but to counter that, I'm going to create another point just up here and drag it down slightly. And then I'm going to create a third point just trying to play around with the contrast this way. And you can see how this looks much better already. Perfect. Then it's time to enhance the glow on the horizon level. For that I'm using a new layer and I'm switching the blending mode to soft light. Then pick up the brush by pressing B and I'm dropping the brush opacity to let's say around 15%. For the foreground color, I'm using a very, very warm color tone. Let's maybe make it a little brighter. Okay. And then I'm just going to paint in a very, very strong glow effect along the bright parts of the sky. And I'm going to make it a lot stronger where the sun is shining through. Let's maybe bring up the opacity. Just to make the glow a lot stronger in those areas. Okay, I think that looks great. Then I do want to apply a bit of dotting. Again, I'm creating a new layer and switch the blending mode to overlay. For the dotting part, I'm using the TK panel plugin as always. This is a paid plugin, but there's also a free version available with most of the settings I'm using for this shot. 
So I do want to dodge the highlights in the foreground. That means I'm going to use a lights mask. Let's see. I think lights two is looking pretty good. So I'm applying this as a layer mask on the overlay layer. Then again, I'm grabbing the brush and set the foreground color to white because I want to dodge things and I'm bringing up the brush opacity. And now I'm just carefully brushing over the foreground here, especially over the boardwalk. So let's deactivate. Looking pretty good so far. We do have a few parts in the sky selected as well. So I'm just erasing them from the dodging layer. And that's pretty much perfect. Next up, just to be safe and have a backup, I'm going to merge all those layers into a single layer by pressing Ctrl, Shift, Alt, E. With this layer, I want to again make use of the TK panel plugin. Let's see. I want to add some kind of Orton Glow effect. I guess I am going with the lights 2 mask again, but this time I'm hitting the selection button. Then I'm just hitting Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste it. And with that new layer, I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's see if we can bring up the amount a bit. I think that looks quite good. Okay. Of course, this looks a bit weird now, so I'm going to change the blending mode to lighten and bring down the opacity here. And this way we can add a very nice subtle Orton Glow effect. We can make it a bit stronger by duplicating that layer, so just hit Ctrl J. Once again, I want to merge all the layers into a single file, so let's hit Ctrl Alt Shift E again. And this time I'm going to duplicate that layer once more. And to make the Orton Glow effect stronger, I'm using this whole layer and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And again, just hit OK. Switch the blending mode to Lighten. And here I'm bringing down the opacity quite a bit more. All right. Then I also want to add a bit more contrast to the glow. So again, I'm using a Curves Adjustment layer and I'm creating a clipping layer by holding down the Alt key and clicking between those two. So the curves adjustment will only affect the blurred layer below it. And how do we add contrast? Simply by creating a S curve like this, bringing down the shadows and increasing the highlights. And by doing this, the shadows will get a little less blur, but the highlights will get a bit more blur. All right, looking pretty good so far. Then let's adjust a bit more saturation by using a vibrance adjustment layer and bringing up the vibrance. I want this image to be very colorful, so that's looking great. At this point, I do want to enchance those colors, especially the warmer color tones some more. For that reason, let's go into the adjustment layers and I'm going to use a color balance adjustment layer. Here it's important to not go with the midtones. First, I want to work on the highlights. And with the highlights selected, I can just bring up the reds a bit. I can also use the slider to get some more yellows going on in the highlights. All right, that is looking awesome. We can also work on the shadows. Here, just bring up the blues a little bit to get a more intense blue color tone going on. And also just add some more contrast. This adjustment layer does have a quite big impact on the colors. Finally, for some more overall warmth, I am going to use a photo filter adjustment layer and maybe drop the density just a little bit to not make it too strong. But I quite like how this adds the overall warmth effect on this whole shot. Then there's one more thing I want to fix. And for that, I'm going to merge all the layers again. So Control, Alt, Shift, E. And one thing that's really, really distracting me is this bright spot up here in the sky. I'm going to get rid of it using the clone stem tool and I'm just copying an area from right next to it, just painting over it. Perfect. There's also some strange railing going on in the very front of the boardwalk, which I could erase. I guess I can just use the spot healing brush for that. Let me try. 
looking good so far, but for the rest I think I do need the clone step tool again. So first off, I am copying an area from this wooden pole and try to get rid of that metal thing in front of it. All right, and here we have the finished image. So as you saw, this was a bit more complicated than usual. I still hope this video was helpful and interesting. Of course, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.